Okay. Hey, hope this is working. Because guess what just happened? I just did a 30 minute video and went to take a look at it and it didn't record. Yeah. So we're going to try this again, but hold on because I'm coming around there to make sure it's recording. So mm, while I'm doing that, get a piece of paper out and number it to 12. This is just, look at it. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, it's going. All right, here we go. So number your paper to 12. We're going to begin our time together again today. This will be good because I just did it. Okay. We're going to begin our time together today with a segment that I like to call, Do You Still Know Stuff? Okay. By the way, it's Monday, April 6th. Yeah. And we are getting started with this online learning. So we're going to start with a little segment called, Do You Still Know Stuff? It's been three weeks since I've been with you. We learned a lot before spring break, and I don't want you to forget it. So we are going to review. So you've numbered one through 12. I hope you can see these posters. I'm going to hold them up. So pay attention. Here we go. Here's a sentence. The little girl angrily slammed the bedroom door. Okay, the little girl angrily slammed the bedroom door. For number one, I want to know the part of speech of the word little. Okay, part of speech. Miss Powell, it's been three weeks. You might want to review. Okay, I will. No problem. Parts of speech. Nouns, person, place, or thing. Verb can be action or linking. Remember, those linking verbs kind of trip us up a little, so be careful with that. Adjectives describe nouns. Adverbs can describe verbs, or we learned right before spring break, adverbs can give us more information about an adjective. We have prepositions that often tell us where or when. We have conjunctions that join things together. And we have interjections, which usually come at the beginning of a sentence and are things that express emotion, like, hey, quit, or ouch, that hurt. Right? Interjections. Okay. Is that all? Pronoun. Don't forget the pronoun. Pronouns take the place of nouns. I, he, she, it, we, they, them. Okay, little. The little girl. Part of speech of little, put it next to number one. Number two, part of speech of girl. Write it down. You still know stuff? Number three, it's got an L-Y, doesn't it? Hmm, put the part of speech of angrily. Number four, put the part of speech of slammed. Okay, number five, astrology. It's got two Greek and Latin roots in it. What does the word astrology mean? Put the definition next to number five. Number six, perimeter. Two Greek and Latin roots. Ha ha, ha ha. Okay, what does the meaning of what is the meaning of the word perimeter? Write it on your paper. Is this good? Is this going well? Do you still know stuff? Okay. Number seven. I can't read backwards. I went to house last week. There, there, or there. Which one? Write it next to number seven. I went to house last week. Number eight. I wanted to play outside, but it was hot. Two, two, two. Which two? I wanted to play outside, but it was hot. Okay, papers are out of order because I already did this lesson. All right, number nine. After the storm, comma, we had to pick up the limbs. Mm, that's not what it says. Broken limbs. After the storm, we had to pick up broken limbs. I want to know what's the purpose of that comma and don't put introductory element, okay? There are many introductory elements that we have to consider. Be more specific. I want to know exactly why is that comma there? Be specific. Hmm. Okay, you still need this. Number 10 says, what kind of sentence is number nine? What kind of sentence is number nine? After the storm, we had to pick up broken limbs. Is it a simple sentence? Is it a compound sentence? Or is it complex? Put your answer next to number 10. Number 11, break, break. Are those antonyms, synonyms, homophones, 
homophones, or homographs. Your answer will be one of these things. Antonym, synonym, homograph, homophone. Break, break. Okay, still no stuff. Last one, number 12. And then we're gonna go over them. An analogy, okay, this is an analogy. Remember we did these with our game in the multi-purpose room right before spring break? Penta is to five as octo is to hmm. But your answer, and it's number 12. Okay, let's check. Are you still know that? Was that hard? If you get it right, put a little check or a happy face next to it. If you get it wrong, put an X, and I don't know how we're going to talk about it. You can email me if you're confused. Okay. All right, number one, the little girl angrily slammed the bedroom door. Little is an adjective. You should have put adjective next to number one. It is a describing word, and it's describing the word girl. So number two, girl is a noun. If you got it right, put a check. If you got it wrong, put a, uh, let's see, check or happy face if you got it right. X if you got it wrong. Or fix it, erase it, put the right answer. Nobody knows. I can't see you. Okay. Angrily is an adverb because it tells how she slammed the door. Angrily, number three, is an adverb. Number four, slammed is a verb. Check. Happy. Yay. Number five. Astrology, the two roots are astron or astro, means star. Ology means study of. So astrology means the study of stars. Yeah. Perimeter, meter means to measure. Peri means around. So perimeter means to measure what? Say it. All the way around. I can hear you. I can't really. I'm pretending. Okay. I went to T-H-E-I-R house last week. We need the possessive pronoun there. Okay. I wanted to play outside, but it was T-O-O -O, hot. Two can mean also. It was also hot. No. But T-O-O -O can also mean more than you need. Was it more hot than you need? Yes. T-O-O. -O. Okay, number nine. After the storm, we had to pick up broken limbs. What is the purpose of the comma? This is an introductory dependent clause. When my dependent clause comes at the beginning of the sentence, I have to put a comma after it. Now, I could move that dependent clause to the end. Listen, it's magic. We had to pick up broken limbs after the storm. Do I need a comma when the dependent clause is at the end of the sentence? No, you don't. Only when it's an introductory dependent clause, comma, which makes this sentence, number 10, a complex sentence. Com so it says what kind of sentence was number nine? Complex sentences have both a dependent and an independent clause. Now, if I decided to move my dependent clause to the end of the sentence, we had to pick up broken limbs after the storm. Is it still a complex sentence? I feel like this is like Dora when she'll ask a question, stand there and wait for the kid. Are you saying the answers back to me? Please do. Okay. Complex. Still a complex sentence, no matter where the dependent clause is, right? But if it's at the beginning, I have to put a comma. Okay. Break. Break. Let's review these four things, okay? Antonyms are what? Opposites. Synonyms mean the same. Homographs look the same, but they do not mean the same thing. Bank, bank, bat, bat. Remember we talked about that? Do you still know stuff? Okay. These are homophones. Homophones sound the same, but they do not look the same. Okay. Break, break. They don't look the same. Not a homograph. It's definitely not these two. Homophone. Okay. And then our last one. Are you getting all happy faces? All check marks? Okay. Do you still know stuff? Don't forget your stuff. Okay. Analogy. These are analogies. Penta is to five as octo is to eight. Eight. The number eight. Okay. And wait. Analogies are very specific. We're going to talk more about analogies in a couple weeks. They're very specific. Because I put the numeral five, I would not write it in word form here. E-I-G-H-T. Eh -eh. I, because I put the numeral here, you need to put the numeral here. 
If I had put F-I-V-E here, I would have put E-I-G-H-T. So be specific on these analogies. They have to match exactly. Make sense? Okay, good. Do you still know stuff? Okay, so we're going to review. We're going to review like this, probably like for the first few minutes every time. Okay, now we're moving into some serious stuff. Okie dokie. We're going to work on a piece of writing this week. One piece of writing. You're going to work on a rough draft today and tomorrow. By Wednesday, you'll get another video. Hi, from me. And we're going to work with the rough draft on Wednesday. And then you'll work on a final copy. And you will then record yourself reading your paper on Flipgrid. And we'll all be able to go in and see your paper. Hear your paper. Hear you reading your paper. Right, on Flipgrid. Okay, so I'm going to walk us through what's going on. Now, let me say this first. Okay. I'm going over some things in this video that I think need more explanation that you might find to be a bit tricky in this piece of writing. <coughs> Included with wherever you, on Google Classroom, where you found this video, you will find a document and I'm holding it because I printed it. Now, it might be a bad idea if you have a printer to print it out, okay? But I have given you tips and steps and bullets for every paragraph of this essay, okay? It's gonna be a five paragraph essay. You can do it, don't worry. Don't be sad. Don't walk away. Come back here, sit down, it's just fine. Okay, on the second page, I've given you the success criteria. Remember we, it's no secret how to have a successful piece of writing. I've put it right here. There is a note that says we're gonna add something Wednesday to the success criteria, but we're not worried about that today. So please understand, hear me say, Everything I talk about today and everything I show you today and everything I model for you today is in this document, okay? It's here and you can either go back and watch this video or you can read this document or you can watch the video while you have the document next to you, okay? So I've tried to make it as simple as possible when we're not face to face, okay? It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be great. So here's our target, okay. I can provide examples and commentary to express emotion in a piece of writing. We're gonna write about the quarantine. We're gonna write about the virus, not much about the virus, mostly about the quarantine, and about kind of what is happening in our world. Now you can make this first person, you can have yourself in it. You can talk about what's going on in your own life, or you can talk about what's going on globally or in the world or in the United States or whatever. But this is um, a very strange, and here's a word, unprecedented, time. That means it's never happened before. Y'all are the first fifth graders to ever, ever, ever experience this, okay? And wow, has it not turned the world upside down, right? I mean, I'm looking at a phone instead of your precious faces. It's different. So we're going to write about that so that we can document it so that someday when your kids or your grandkids go, God, what was that like? You can go, gosh, I wrote about it and I expressed my emotion. And when we're thinking about emotion, I want you to really kind of think about what you're feeling. Maybe it's confusion, anxiousness, maybe you're worried, maybe you're a little scared, maybe you're picking up on some of that from the people around you. Everybody's feeling that, so it's not unusual for you to be feeling that. Lottie's probably not, she's kind of wild, but everybody else is kind of feeling some of that, right? So we're gonna to try to get it all out through our writing, okay? Now, the first thing you'll do, now if you want to do it now, kind of along with me and hit the stop button, pause button, as we're going, that's fine. Or if you just want to watch the video and wait and do this stuff once you get the document out or print the document or whatever, I don't care. I'm not there. I don't know what you're going to do. But you could do it either way. But the first thing you're going to do on a piece of paper is you're going to brainstorm, okay? This is where we're going to get all of our ideas out. And I want you to make a chart that looks like this, okay? So you're going to have changes. So oh, aren't there some changes? that we've experienced in the last three weeks. Some challenges, yep, there are challenges we have experienced, but there are some positives too, okay? Just about any time, guys, that something rough is going on or something confusing or scary, if you look hard enough, and we're gonna talk about that, you can find something positive about it or something on the bright side, to look on the bright side, right? So you're gonna have changes, challenges, and positives, okay? Now, you do not have to brainstorm in complete sentences. This will be a bulleted list, right? What are some, let's focus here, what are some changes 
that you have experienced or that the world is experiencing in the last three weeks, four weeks, whatever. I don't know how long it's been. So one of them clearly is our schools are closed. We're doing all of our learning totally at home, totally online. My whole family is at home and my parents are having to help me more and more with my homework and having to watch videos of my teacher. I mean, how different is that? Just think about, oh, we're, we, we are encouraged not to go out of our houses. We're encouraged to stay at home. Um, what are some changes that have happened in the world or in your neighborhood or in your house since this all began? And you'll just bullet a few, okay? Three, four. Challenges. Are there any challenges that you've experienced? Maybe you go into the grocery store and, uh, hello, can't find any toilet paper. That's a challenge. Gonna be if you run out of toilet paper, right? Or maybe you can't find bread. Or maybe your parents are having to work from home and it is loud and crowded in your house and you're getting a little bit tired of everybody. That's a challenge, okay? I'm having to cook a massive amount of food every day. That's a challenge for me. I'm not sleeping well. I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about you people and all the stuff I need to teach you and how am I going to do that? And that's a challenge for me. So think about some things that are challenging for you. Maybe you're bored. That's a challenge, okay? Maybe your mama won't let you have a friend over. That's a challenge. I guess that's also a change. You have to decide. But now let's talk about what are some positives. Well, we have a lot more time to hang out as a family. We've been playing board games. My boys have learned to sh properly shuffle cards. Very important skill to learn. I'm not having to get up at 5.30 in the morning. I can sleep in and basically teach you whenever I want to throughout the day. So my schedule is not as rigid as it was before. So those are some positives, right? Okay, so you're going to fill out, and you'll add more than that. Fill out your little brainstorming chart. Okay, step one. All right, now this document will then kind of start once you do your brainstorm. It's going to have you get out a piece of paper and at the top you're going to title it the quarantine of 2020. Okay? So you'll title your paper and you're going to start your rough draft. It's going to be a five paragraph essay. You will write an introductory paragraph. We'll talk about that in just a sec. You will write a paragraph about how things have changed, a paragraph about the challenges, a paragraph about the positives, and a conclusion. Okay? So I want to talk about the introductory paragraph, just like we've been doing all year long. Our introductory paragraph will not necessarily, or it won't, tell any of these things that you brainstormed. It's going to set the paper up for us, okay? And do you remember, do you still know stuff? How do we always begin our introductory paragraph? What do we always start with? If you said interesting hook, Give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, so we're going to start with an interesting hook. This document reminds you of that. This document reminds you of the different kinds of hooks we've talked about. But I've kind of modeled some of that because that's hard, okay? So there are four different kinds of hooks that we've talked about so far this year. We've practiced every single one of them. You'll choose one. You're not going to write all four of them. You'll choose one. Remember, the hook is going to draw the reader in. Nobody wants to read something that's what? Boring. Okay, right. So we want to make it interesting and we want to hook them in so that they want to read the rest of our paper. Okay? So we can have a list of adjectives or nouns. We could ask a question. We could have a description. Or we can have a quote. All right, I'm going back. We can have a list of adjectives or nouns. Maybe you'll start. That'll be your hook. Here's a model. Here's an example. Can't use mine. Don't be a cheater. Okay. Here's mine. Fear, worry, frustration, and confusion. Many people are experiencing these things right now. Okay. A list of words. You start with a list of words and then kind of explain, right? All right. We could ask a question. A lot of you like to start that way. We could ask a question. Here's my example. Did you ever imagine a time when the whole world would be shut down? Well, if I'm a reader and I'm reading that first line, I'm like, what? The whole world got shut down. Why? I'm going to keep reading, right? Okay. Description. Empty grocery shelves, vacant streets, abandoned schools, and quiet masked people coming and going. These are common sights these days. Now, if I read that, I feel like I'm reading some sort of science fiction novel or something, right? But that's the real world right now, isn't it? That's the world we're living in. It's so unusual. 
So you might start with a list of things you're seeing or a description of things that are going on. Very neat. Okay. I don't know if neat's the right word. Anyway, okay. Quote. I don't know that many of us, some of you in your research paper started with a quote. We haven't practiced this one as much. But if you turn on the news or if you watch the little ticker at the bottom of the news, you're going to see quotes of things that the president has said or the doctors or Dr. Fauci, who is one of the lead people on the task force. They are saying some of the same phrases over and over, right? So those would be interesting quotes to use. Um, one I've heard over and over is facts, not fear. They want to tell us what's going on in the world, but they don't want to scare us, right? So that's an interesting quote. I chose... This used to be 15, but they just moved it to 30. 30 days to stop the spread. They're telling everybody, stay home for 30 days and the virus won't spread as bad, right? So that's a quote they keep saying over and over. Notice, because I'm using a quote, I put it in quotation marks. Can you see that? I don't know. Okay, I did. Put it in quotation marks. 30 days to stop the spread, quotation marks. We've all been given requirements and conditions to stop this virus. Now, those would just be your hook, right? Your first one, two, three sentences in your paragraph. Then you're going to take some time in that introductory paragraph, two sentences maybe, no big deal, to tell what it is you're talking about. What does that even relate to? Well, it relates to the coronavirus, COVID-19, and the quarantine that it caused to happen all around the world. And this document tells you what to do, but you're going to have your hook and then you're going to spend a couple of sentences talking about what's going on in the world. A virus has attacked hundreds of thousands of people. Okay, again, we're not doing this to be scared. So this is facts on fear, right? So you're just going to write about, report the facts, what's going on in the world. Okay, now here is the new thing. We haven't done this before, so pay attention. Sit up straight, listen, turn your volume up. Okay, we are going to all have the same topic sentence, and I've written it for you. Okay, it's in your document that you're going to open up in a minute, and I'm going to show it to you on a little chart in just a sec. But we're all going to use the same topic sentence. Now, a lot of people, not y'all because you're smart and you know stuff, think that the topic sentence always has to be the first sentence in the paragraph or the first sentence in the essay. Shake your head no. We know that's not true. Our first sentence, hello, is our interesting hook. It's not a topic sentence. It's a hook. It's how we're drawing our reader in. We are going to put our topic sentence, pay attention, as the last sentence of our first paragraph. All right, so we're going to have our hook, one or two or three sentences. We're going to explain what's going on, facts, not fear. And then we're going to have our topic sentence. This will be everyone's last sentence of their first paragraph, of their introductory paragraph. And here it is. I wrote it for you. You will copy it. These confusing days of sickness and quarantine are so unusual and challenging, but if we look hard enough, we can find positives too. I'm going to read it one more time. These confusing days of sickness and quarantine are so unusual and challenging, but if we look hard enough, we can find positives too. Now, what's going to happen? That'll be the last sentence of your first paragraph. So basically, you'll have your introduction and tucked away in this topic sentence it explains what my next three paragraphs are going to be about. Okay, look, they're there. Sickness and quarantine are unusual. That's your changes paragraph. And challenging. That's your challenging paragraph. Challenges paragraph. But if we look hard enough, we can find the, what's our next paragraph going to be? Positives. I heard you. I heard you. Positives too. So each of these becomes its own paragraph. We'll have our introductory paragraph. Then this will be the last sentence of the introductory paragraph. We'll skip a line, indent, write our cha uh, changes paragraph. Skip a line, indent, write our challenges paragraph. Skip a line, indent, write our positives paragraph. Skip a line, indent, guess what the last paragraph will be? Introduction, changes, challenges, positives. What's that going to be? Our conclusion. And the document tells you how to do that. Okay? Now, oh my gosh, I think that's it. That's a lot. Again, you can go back and watch this again. You're going to look at your document. You can print it or just look at it, whatever you want to do. It tells you exactly what to do, but here's what I need you to do. You have today and tomorrow 
to work on your five paragraph essay. I would like a rough draft of all five paragraphs by Wednesday. And I want you to bring it with you when you sit down to watch Wednesday's video. Okay. So we're going to do a little stuff, stuff, a little thing to tweak it on Wednesday. Um, and then we're going to write our final copies and then we're going to put it on Flipgrid, read it on Flipgrid so that we can all hear each other's writing. Now you're going to need a baggie or a folder at home. Just kind of find one because your precious, wonderful writing portfolios are still in room 406 at Rock Quarry. And I'm not throwing those away because they are full of fabulous writing that you've done all year. So as we work on the next eight weeks, whatever it is, we're going to do one, sometimes two pieces of writing a week. So you'll still be collect. We're still going to do some quick writes. We're still going to stuff. We got stuff. Okay. So I want you to save every single thing you do. I want you to put it in a baggie, put it in a folder because... Um, if I have to bring it to your driveway and leave it in your mailbox, at some point before you start middle school, everybody's going to get their writing portfolio back. And you'll be able to take all these pieces of writing that you have done here in the last nine weeks of school and put them in your writing portfolio with the rest of your stuff from the year. So I want you to keep up with everything, okay? This is not just, I'm going to do it, and oh, well, that one's done. No, 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 no. You're going to keep up with every bit of it, okay? So, review. Look at the document. It tells you everything. If you have questions, you can email them to me. I'll be checking that. I'm also going to be on Google Meet tomorrow. I don't remember what time. Wait. Hold on. I have it written down. I'm going to be on Google Meet tomorrow at 930. Tomorrow's Tuesday, April 7th. I'll be on Google Meet 930 to 10. Um, and I'll push out the code for that. I'll let you know what the code is. Because um, I don't know that yet. And... You can ask me questions there, okay? So if you're confused about anything I talked about or you want to say, hey, will you listen to my hook? Is that okay or whatever? We can do that through Google Meet, okay? And then Wednesday, you'll come with your paper, pencil, and your rough draft of your essay. We're going to do some other things on Wednesday, and then you'll have the rest of the week to finish it up and then have it ready to go on Flipgrid on Friday. Okay, guys, that's a lot. But you'll do great. I'm proud of you already. You haven't done anything. I'm already proud of you. Okay. I'm going to use my doodad and turn you off again. Email me with questions. I'm thinking about y'all. And this is good. We're going to do great. Y'all are awesome.